What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with a blog or audio blog update for an update from a few months ago. So I wanted to put this out just um, because I don't generally do very many blog posts and I don't really get very many updates as far as what's happening on a personal front as far as what I'm up to and what some of the behind the scenes stuff for Headphones Neil reviews. So for this particular update, I wanted to share some progress and thoughts on some stuff that and changes that happened earlier in 2021. So um, I know for, towards the end of 2020 and beginning of 2021, I was talking about inheriting a laptop and considering and weighing the options of using Linux versus Windows. And I ended up going with Kubuntu 21.04. So that's basically um, Ubuntu Linux, but it runs the KDE Plasma interface. Um, so overall, I want to say I'm very impressed with what I have in that platform using a solid state drive in the um, in my laptop along with K Linux makes it a very fast boot. Overall stability is nice. The updating system is a lot better than what I remember of it from using it maybe about 10 or 15 years ago. So there have been a lot of good improvements. The visuals of it are nice if you're using the, the default theme. But there's also a theming engine built in, so you can install various themes to make it look like Windows 10 or OS X or something a little bit more futuristic like you see in the screenshot um, for this post. So overall, that's a very good system. The one thing that I found wasn't very intuitive or could be improved upon is the actual application of the themes. So once you've installed it and you set your various options like the global theme, the um, lock screen um, image, your icons and cursors and things like that, the best thing to do right away is to reboot your system. So that way all the changes get, are go into effect and it doesn't really work kind of like if you install a critical system update. Um, so when you have a system critical update, it tells you to restart your computer. So that's one of those things that would be nice in this case. So on one hand, it feels like it's something that should happen on the fly, but because it doesn't, I would, I would even say there should be a recommendation to say that if the theme doesn't apply properly or not all elements are uh, working to reboot your system. So it goes kind of along the lines to Substratum for Android, where you, once you apply a theme, you have to reboot your system so that the system UI restarts and all the changes can go into effect. So that's one of the things that's lacking as far as an inability or a, something that's not quite clear. But if you do have a solid state drive in a relatively new system, you know, one that built in the past few years, then the boot time is pretty fast and it's I want to say less than 30 seconds um, and using it now for about three to four months I want to say that so far the boot speed time has not changed very much so um, when you are um, booting up after one month versus three months then um, it is one of those things where um, the boot time hasn't changed very much as far as you know over the course of time so one of those so that's one of those things that i do like that's compared to at least windows 10 and i want to say windows 10 is maybe about the same in the first few months and if you're using a solid state drive but you do notice very strange quirks when windows 10 so i want to say that i'm going to give um um Linux that same amount of time as far as maybe give it to the end of 2021 to see if anything funky like that happens. Um, but other than that, um, overall I want to say that I'm very impressed with the um, performance and usability of um, the Linux system as a whole. So with that I'm going to jump into uh, my thoughts and impressions on the OnePlus 9, um, OnePlus 9 Pro on the T-Mobile system, so on the T-Mobile variant of the uh, phone, and I want to say that overall I'm impressed with the general build quality, functionality, and all, and um, user and general performance of the phone. So I like the camera, I like the system stability and all of that and performance and things like that so I don't really have any issues and I find that I generally don't have any um, 
um, issues with the phone as far as using it. And I don't really have any performance issues in general with OnePlus phones. But the one thing to notice is that, or note, is that if you are using a OnePlus phone on T-Mobile, that the updates are going to be a little bit behind the global release or the release of the same model phone um, as if you were buying an unlocked version. So, for example, as of this recording, um, the global version of the phone um, is on a build that ends in, I think, 277, but in on T-Mobile, it's the, on the build ending in 244, so it's like two or three updates behind, which is kind of a bummer because... Of course, as a phone user, you want the latest and greatest updates, but to T-Mobile's credit, they do check for compatibility and other issues before pushing out the update. But coming from the, an unlocked phone to the T-Mobile variant, you are going to notice things like that. So for me, if you care a lot about how soon you get the latest updates from OnePlus phones or any, un any other unlocked device, then I recommend not going with the um, carrier and um, going with the unlocked version of the same model phone just so that you have one less um, uh, step in the middle as far as delaying the updates. So that's one thing I think that T-Mobile can kind of work on is being more up to date with the updates or not taking you know a month to a month and a half between updates, especially when OnePlus iterates a little bit faster than that, and there could be potentially a few updates by the time they roll out, or there could potentially be a few updates from OnePlus when T-Mobile only releases one. So while I'm not bu I'm, I'm bummed that T-Mobile doesn't have faster updates, I do want to say that if you care about things like waterproofing on your phone or at least water resistance, then that's the one thing benefit that the T-Mobile variant has over the unlocked version. Um, so that's one of those things to weigh that if you don't care as much about how fast you get updates, as long as you're getting them and you want some a water resistance on your phone, then the T-Mobile variant of the OnePlus 9 Pro is okay to use. Um, so that's one of those thing, things to consider. So overall good, but so one thing to say is that faster updates would be nicer, but it's not the end of the world as overall the performance of the phone on T-Mobile has been good and stable, so I can't really complain, but it would be nice to have the faster rollups. So with that being said, that's really all there is um, for um that so to round it out uh, i wanted to give an update on my progress and thoughts and things like that for star wars the old republic so one of the concerns that i had when i started playing or started considering replaying the game was that it wouldn't run on steam via linux or it wouldn't run at all on my laptop so uh when i was able to get at least steam installed that was a promising start the game installed and I was able to get it going. Um, I think I originally had an issue as far as the compatibility using Proton, but once I found a good version of Proton that worked, the game was able to run. I'm able to play it nicely, albeit on um, all the lowest settings because I don't have it's not the latest laptop or hardware or video card or anything like that, but the game still plays. I generally don't have very much lag or stutter or anything like that. So overall, I want to say that I'm impressed with all of that. So it's nice to also be able to get regular updates and things like that. And I did have a hiccup at some at one point where I think I had the automatic Proton update set. So I, it got updated to a version of Proton that was not compatible with the Old Republic on Linux. So I was confused and I was almost bummed that that didn't work. But once I started poking around the settings, I changed it back to Proton on version 5 point something or other restarted steam and i think i restarted my computer just to be safe but overall once i did all of that everything fell back into place and i was able to continue playing the game so i want to say that overall I'm, I'm impressed with the game as a good sequel to um, knights of the old republic one a little bit with two but the game is more feels more in tune with knights of the old republic one as the sith lords is more of an individual sequel based on one singular follower to Revan, so it kind of fills in a little bit of backstory that was not really presented in the first one, so it would have been nice to have more continuity there. 
or at least find out what happened to Revan. But I guess there's some story points in the Old Republic that's supposed to fix that. And at least in my gameplay so far, there are the followers of Revan who are on... And I already forgot the plan. I want to say maybe Nar Shadda or one of those, or maybe Droman Kos, where the dark side followers of Revan are still on the planet following um, his paths and ways and teachings and all that. So um, it's one of those things where I want to say that I'm so far I'm enjoying Knights of the Old Republic, or sorry, Star Wars The Old Republic, just because of the grand scale of it. I like the ability to pan around up and down, left and right, and all of that to view the world. So it's very, it's a very immersive style of gameplay and a definite improvement over Knights of the Old Republic where you could only really look left and right. Um, so those little things stand out and then I do like that they made the worlds that much more expansive so when you're visiting Droman Kos or Tatooine or um, Nar Shadda or any of those planets, the ability to spend the time to go around and navigate the planets and talk to people and interact with vendors and things like that are overall very nicely done. And getting used to the um, RPG elements of playing of um, your inventory system and things like that generally work very nicely. So if you come from Knights of the Old, Old, Knights of the Old Republic 1 or 2, then it will you'll feel very much at home as far as general basic um, interactions go but also have a little bit of learning to do as far as your inventory management goes various controls your in, um, attack interactions and things like that so when you're playing the game you'll i find that it's very enjoyable as a good sequel to the game or to the other two games um other than that um um, the one thing that I know in playing the game, so if you're playing a more story-like gameplay or playthrough of the game, like you, like I am, then one of the things that's kind of strange is upgrading your character's lightsaber and armor and things like that. So I haven't done very much of that aside from what I've received in playing in completing the various missions for Darth Barriss. So. As a bit of backstory, I am playing the Sith Warrior um, class, so um, obviously I'm working for the Empire, and you be ultimately become the Padawan to Dark Barris. Although by the end of the first chapter, or it, wasn't, it doesn't feel like it's very clear. I guess you started as an apprentice, but you get become the Padawan, and by the end of the first chapter, you become a Lord, and you're not really his. You're, I want to say you're kind of is a Padawan but not really because he's sending you out on missions to work with him and you're continuing to work with him but the upgrade system for things like your lightsaber and armor is not very clear so I didn't really do very much of that yet. So now that I finished the first chapter in, or first episode or whatever of the game and it's gonna po looks like it's gonna be a lot more expansive as far as characters and planets to visit, uh, one of the things I'm gonna do is um, play through some of the missions that are on the side as far as visiting the um, Sith Empire's fleet, um, potentially engaging in some of the aerial battles and stuff like that. But I'm, I also kind of want to visit the fleet, the Imperial fleet, to see if there's a way to, or to learn a little bit more about crafting items, um, upgrading a lightsaber, getting better armor, and things like that. And maybe even seeing if there's maybe something I missed or just haven't gotten to yet because I should have done that a while ago. So um, that's one of the things I want to do is upgrade my character a little bit more as far as various stats and armor and lightsaber um, features and things like that. So that's kind of where I'm at right now, but um, that doesn't really take away from the... Um, enjoyment of the game. Um, the other thing that I have not done very much of are the heroic um, elements. So that does take a little bit more time. So a, a one to two hours to play through and teaming up with other people. So if you have to stop, you know, at a half an hour or you don't really have the time for a full playthrough, then it's hard to kind of play through some of those elements. So if you watch some of the videos on uh, that I've been uploading to YouTube, I think I tried it early on maybe or I forget if I maybe didn't even upload those videos, but you don't see very many of the heroic playthroughs on the playlist because I haven't done that. Um, there have been times when I've played a couple, one or two hours of the game, but um, that's just because I wanted to finish some of the missions and they take a little bit longer than I expected. So in general, I want to say that it's not 
not playing the heroic motions does not take away from uh, the enjoyment of the game or, or leveling up your character, but I have a feeling that there are stuff that there is items that you can get on those missions that might assist in getting better armor. So um, to that end, that's kind of why I want to narrow down where upgrades and armor and various other um, add-ons can be found. So by visiting the Imperial Fleet, if I can get some of those things there, then um, that will work out perfectly. But if not, then I know that I have to at least do a few of those heroic missions on planets I've already been to in order to get those additional items. But to sum it all up, in general, I am enjoying the game. It's good to play through. It would be nice to play it on higher video graphic settings, but playing it even on low doesn't take away from it. It feels more consistent with Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, so it's, not, it's less of a um, change in graphical visibility or how you view the graphics if you're playing on low just because if you come from the first and second games then it kind of feels on par except for the uh, some of the movements that you can now move up and down and the uh, levels feel more expansive but overall it is a fun game to still play so that is all for this particular um post as far as some of the updates and things i've been to so um I'll, I might do another Ubuntu or Kubuntu update later in the year if anything changes or anything like that, but overall there's very little I want to say that would change my opinion as far as wanting to switch from Linux to Windows. Um, with the OnePlus 9 Pro, it's nice. It's a good phone overall. I recommend it as far as overall performance, but taking it into consider, consideration as far as the T-Mobile variant goes, I'd probably give it about an 85%. If you're on the global version of the phone, then I'd probably give it about 90 to 95% just because in general, the phone is very um, easy to use. The performance is nice. The camera is awesome. But um, as far as... Um, which carrier you're using it on, I would not recommend buying it on any particular carrier just because of the delayed rollout of updates. And as far as Star Wars Old Republic goes, it is a good game. I definitely recommend playing it if you are a Star Wars fan. Um, I think the first 60 levels are free to play and then if once you want, if you want to um, grow your character or level up your character beyond that, then you have to start paying for it. So. Um, overall, I give the game a grade of about 90% and it does work on Linux, which is a definite nice thing. So um, in general, I found, I'm finding that Linux has a lower overhead than Windows. So I think that's also why the game is able to perform a little bit more easily than, I, than it might if it was on a Windows system. But that's neither here nor there. The game itself is fun. I'm enjoying playing it. Um, now that I'm done with the first chapter, I'm going to spend a little bit more time exploring some of the other missions before I continue on to the various other story elements as far as um, Darth Barris and his uh, network of stuff and storylines go. So that's all there is for this particular uh uh, post. So if you have any questions, comments, feedbacks, updates that I can help provide, then you can find me on Twitter at, at, at PatelN01. The website's headphones nailed out reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in, and until next time. <laughs>